Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all of you, a very good day to all of you. And my name is Faisal, Faisal Ahmed, and I'll be the speaker for today's uh, session. So all of you can switch on your camera so that we can start our today's discussion about an important topic. All of you switch on your camera and uh, let me, let me um, allow you guys to send message in the chat box. Who can tell me what is the topic for today's discussion? Can anyone please type the topic in the chat box so that I can understand how ready you are for today's discussion? Can anyone? Yeah, the chat box is open for me and for my for my colleague, Mr. Govind. You can send your message to me. What is the topic for today that we have taken? Who remembers? Uh, do not do not open your uh, uh, poster from Telegram groups. Can you type from your brain? Ah, uh, see, I'm so sad now. I'm so sad now. None of you remembers the topic for today. Never mind. Now it's my duty to remind you. Look at look at the name of the topic that we have taken for today's discussion. It's all about leadership strategies for driving organizational change. Very important topic. If you are currently, if you are working in a leadership position, like as a supervisor, as a manager, today's discussion will help you a lot how you can enhance your leadership skills at the first place. Yeah, Vanessa, thank you so much that you, at least one of my trainees, remember the name of our today's topic. Thank you so much, Miss Vanessa. Now, before I start my today's discussion, I would like to hear from you. How many of you, uh, before that, can all of you hear my voice? Am I audible? My, my mistake, I didn't check my audio device. Can all of you hear my voice, right? Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. So now, what you need to do, uh, you can raise your digital hand. My question is, currently, how many of you are working as a supervisor or as a manager or as senior manager? I'm talking about how many of you are working in leadership position? Can I see your digital hand? Raise your digital hand. Or what you can do, you can type in the chat box, just type one. If you are working in leadership position currently, you can type one in the chat box so that I can understand how many of you are in today's topic field. Anyone? Feel free, huh? Feel free, no need to be worried, no need to feel shy. Okay, excellent. You can type one in the chat box or you can raise your digital hand. In the meantime, all of you switch on your camera and give me a good smile so that I can mark your attendance for our admin side. Okay, so all of you switch on your camera, three to one. Yep, very good. And give a good smile on screen. Page number two. And the next page I can see, wow, very good. Today, all of you have more and more energy, right? Jacob, Mr. Jacob looks like very energetic today. Wow, excellent. So page number four, and all of you make sure your camera is on so that I can mark your attendance for our admin side. Thank you so much. Okay, good, excellent. Now let's get started. I, uh, I never received any message in the chat box. I never see any digital hand on screen. So it means that all of you are very young, right? All of you are very fresh. And you have no experience about, uh, okay, I can see one participant, uh, yeah, digital hand. Okay, can you please unmute your microphone, Mr. Uh, Acharya? I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Can you please tell me uh, in which industry you are working and what is your job scope? Are you working as a supervisor or a manager? Mr. Opendra, 
Can you please unmute your microphone if you can hear my voice? Hello. Hi, sir. Good evening. Okay, good. Good evening to you. Okay, fine. So can you please tell me in which position you are working currently? What is your job scope? Okay, sir. I'm working in construction industry, sir. As a? As a senior administrative officer, sir. Okay, as you are senior. So how many people yeah. you are managing every single day in your company? Actually, currently we have only around 60 employees. Six, six 60 employees. Yes, 60 employees. Um, and recent, okay. in future, we are going to increase up to 1,500 because we are constructing dam construction, hydropower construction. No? Mm, so wow, we are going it's a very to big project. To, yes, yes. 1,200 megawatt projects. Mm, that's good. Thank Interesting. You. Okay, I have one question for you. So yes. as you are working in a leading position, from your yes. side, do you face any problem, any challenge in order to implement change in your organization? For example, you want to change the working hour, not, not from 9 a.m. From, from the next <clears throat> one, it will be from 8 a.m. So any change when you guys are going to implement do you face any problem, any challenges? Can you please share yes, with sir. us? Yes, yes, definitely, sir. We will face a lot of problem at first when you change the timing and the management, everything it will face a bit difficulty, sir. Currently, okay. actually, construction site, uh, our working hours from eight to eight, 12 hours, sir. Currently. But okay, thank you so much. Thanks for your sharing. Wow, excellent. I can see Mr. Sharma. Sharma, I remember your name, your face from last few <laughs> session. Currently, where you are working? Sir, I'm right now working as labor manager. Manager. So, okay. Oh, my God. So, your life is more and more challenging every single day, managing the people, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you please share with us when you are planning to implement any change, when you are trying to implement new rules? Is there any problem? Is there any challenge that you always face? Just the common two problems. Yes, number one is the mindset of the staff because they are used to of a certain trend and you want to break the trend. So nobody likes a change. It's very hard. Number two? And number two is basically um, a position. So when I say a position, it's more like, why do you want to do it? Hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for your sharing, Mr. Sharma. Let me invite a lady in the block A. Could, could you please unmute your microphone where you are working and what is your position, current work position? Can you hear me? I think she can't. Okay, so whatever Mr. Sharma uh, already informed us, it's true. Change is not easy. Even if you want to change your personal life, personal lifestyle, it is also challenging at the first place. But when we are talking about organizational change, yes, it is more and more challenging. And from today's discussion, we will figure out how as a leader, we can, we can implement the change in our organization without facing any difficulties, without facing much challenges, at the first place. So let me share my screen and let's get started today's discussion right away. So as all of you know, the topic that we, we have today, it's all about leadership strategies for driving organizational change. And we will be talking about a lot of important components, as you can see from this particular PowerPoint slide. You need not to be worried. Our host will be sharing this copy of presentation before I say good night to all of you. Okay, so let's get started from the very first topic, uh, leadership strategies. Think yourself, consider yourself as a leader. You are leading a group of people or you are working a group of people in an organization where every day you need to work with different people from different background with different mindset, with different attitude, with different behavior. So as a leader, how you can put a strategy 
to lead all those people from the front by setting an example. That is called strategy, right? How? See, strategy is a set of methods, tactic, and your attitude that you will be using not, not to control, huh? Leader cannot control the stuff. A leader will guide, a leader will motivate, a leader will do something for the team from the front. So the whole process is known as leadership strategy. And remember, there is no, you know, no fixed or concrete strategy for a leader. Understand what I'm trying to mean? You need to change your strategy from time to time. You need to adjust your method from, from staff to staff. You need to adjust your tactic or technique when you will be communicating with different group of people in your organization. You see, a smart strategy from a smart leader can create a value. Remember, the key word is value. When we can create a value system in our organization or at our workplace, we can really bring our team to be more and more outcome-oriented team. Remember this one, huh? Remember, not everyone in your, I mean, under your guidelines will work for money. Money is not the primary key for the workplace. Anyone can earn money from any job. But when your followers will feel some value from you as a leader, and you can impact, you can create mental and emotional influence for your team, for your team members, only then they will do a lot of things for you and for your organization. Remember, good leadership is more about having the right attitude than technical skills. Please try to understand the powerful statement from this specific PowerPoint slide. If you want to be a strong leader, you should have right attitude than your skills and knowledge because your attitude will drive you what to do, how to do in the right way. All of you clear? Sharma and all the people, the active learners from today's training, remember the first thing as a leader, we should have right attitude. What does it mean? Number one, we have, we must have strong EQ. This is the first quality. As a leader, we cannot take everything personally. We cannot be emotionally weak. So when we can be strong in terms of managing our emotion, as a leader, we can develop a strategy for our organization at the first place. It comes from our right attitude. Now, let's talk, let's talk about why we need leadership strategy in our organization, in our business, in our workplace. What is the reason? Because your strategy will give you a proper guideline. Your strategy will give you the, the mission, the vision, the aim of your organization. See? So every business, think about all the successful business that we can see now, think about Samsung, think about Toyota, think about Microsoft. All the leaders from all those organizations, they have proper vision, proper mission for their individual organization that can help them to create a long-term success in their organization. Think about, think about you are driving a car in a remote area and you have no route map. Mobile network is not working. You, you never go there before. This is the first time you are driving car in that particular location. 
So see what will what will be your actual outcome. You might end up getting lost in the deep forest, right? Then then you need to be uh, then you need to be act like a uh, Tarzan. You know the movie that we watch during our young age, right? So yeah, that's the thing. Remember, without having strategy, without having planning, we cannot consider our organization to move forward. Remember, when we can implement solid leadership strategy, it will find for a leader easily to lead the team and delegate responsibility. And also it will help to develop a culture, culture of innovation at the workplace. Remember this one. Now let me stop sharing my screen and let me say hello to everyone. Can all of you wave your hand with me so that I can understand all of you are here? What I'm trying to mean, I'll give you two examples. Example number one, working under a manager. And example number two, working under a leader. Maricel, understand? Example number one, if you work under a very strict manager who likes to do micromanagement, your manager strategy is to follow the people by doing micromanagement. Mr. Sharma is laughing, meaning to say he has come across with this scenario in his life. No worries. I think your boss is not in this Zoom meeting and I'm not going to share it with your boss, okay? So you can feel free. So what would be your mindset? Let me tell you the truth. Nobody wants to work under a manager who likes to do micromanagement where you cannot implement your own creativity, where you cannot do anything by your own. Though, you already know what to do, how to do. Then what would be your actual mindset? You are not happy with your job. Your mindset will be, you feel stress. You know, the stress will come in your mind. You will feel your job is stressful. And you know, secretly, you will be looking for another job. Agree? See? That's, that's the reality. That's how young people today, they work in their workplace. On the other hand, if you are a leader with strategy or you are following strategic leadership, you always will allow your team or team members to be open in the discussion. Jennifer, am I right? Your leader will come. Jennifer, come and sit. What do you think? Do you think so? Plan A that we have developed for our new sales strategy. Do you think so it will work? Jennifer will say, yes, I think so. Why you think so? Tell me. Th that's the nature of a strategic leader. Leader always will ask question to the followers. Vanessa, understand? Maritis, Danilo, a leader always will ask question to the follower. A leader always will influence the people to create something new for the organization at the first place. So when you feel that your leader always encourage you to give your opinion, to give your ideas, to give your thought, what would be your mindset? Job satisfaction will be there. You will say, I like my job. I like my management. I'm enjoying my work. Now you understand from these two particular examples why people feel stress at the workplace and why people have job satisfaction? It's because of the approach from the leader, not from other people. huh? Okay, excellent. I hope my example makes sense for all of you. Now, let me bring you to in my second I mean, the next slide that I have. Okay. Having a leadership strategy, it will help you to anticipate, influence, engage, 
support and empowering your team members to respond to the market and industry that currently you have in your organization. So the key point, remember, when you can influence other people, what is the meaning of influence? Your followers consider you as their role model. Understand, guys? Let me give you an example. I believe all of you like, all of you like the movie of Tom Cruise. How many of you like the action, like the action of Tom Cruise movies? Can you please wave your hand, raise your digital hand? Yes, I can see a lot of hand is moving now. A lot of hands are moving now. Why? Why you like Tom Cruise action in the movies? Because it's all about acting. It's not anything real. Am I right? Real life cannot be done the way Tom Cruise usually act in his movies. But obviously, why we like him, why we like all those action? Because Tom Cruise acting influence us as an audience. That is called, you know, influence. So when we follow someone because of his or her character, because of his or her presentation, because of his or her leading style, living style, that is called influence. So to be a leader, it's not that easy. We should have those ability how we can influence our, our teammates, how we can engage, support, and the key point, how we we'll empower, you know, how we will motivate them to follow our lead at the first place. So when I can have the behavior to influence you guys or uh, my followers, only then I can do the things for our teammates. All of you agree? Understand? But every time, every time, if I, if I try to find out who is right and who is wrong in my organization or at my workplace, then I cannot, I cannot influence my followers. You cannot influence your follower. See? So it's not about just doing the job. As a leader, we must have to be like an actor, like an actor, like an artist, so that we can influence our follower. Next one, why it is important? It is important because we can attract and we can manage talent. This part is very, very deep for all of you to understand. So from my understanding, as I can see from, from your response in the chat box and from your digital hand, only few of you have, you are working in leadership position. Let's, let's plan something new for our future. So in future, when you will be working in leadership or, or in managerial position, you will find that let me stop sharing. Huh? I, I, I need not to use my PowerPoint slide to explain this one. All of you switch on your camera so that I can see and I can communicate with you as well. Okay? I don't want to speak only from my side. Now, what I'm trying to mean from this one, attract talent and how we can manage talent. Let me give you an example. Miss... Vanessa, Miss Vanessa, can you please wave your hand, Vanessa? Okay, good. So, for example, our dear Miss Vanessa, she's looking for 100 sales staff for her company. I think she's from Philippines. Am I right, Miss Vanessa? Okay. She has a big organization, big company in the Philippines. Now, she's looking for 100 sales staff for her company. And today, if Miss Vanessa published an advertisement or published or post a poster in social media looking for sales executive 
and salary package is blah, blah, blah. Within one hour, he might get more than 1,000 CB, 1,000 resume. Am I right? Am I right? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Within one day, she can get more than 5,000 CB for these 100 jobs as sales executives. She can hire one, 100 people like that. But the question is, the people that Miss Vanessa take in in her organization, are they real talented? Are they all about the skillful sales executive or not? Do you understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? It's easy to hire people for the job, but it's difficult to find the real talent for the organization. And even if you manage to find the talent, the real talent, and if they notice that you as a leader are not productive, are not you know, influential, are not you know, like long-term strategy-based leader, they will resign from your job within one or two months. Understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So the key point, only your leadership strategy can help you to pick up the right talent from the job market in your organization and you can motivate them, you can train them, you can help them to improve more and more in your industry to be more and more productive. Now you understand why leadership strategy is important for organizational management? I hope so. All of you understand? So far, what I have told to all of you, any question from anyone? If you have any question, you can ask me in the chat box. Okay, excellent. Now let's talk about the second, I mean, not second, the next one, why it is important to implement leadership strategy, result, or I can put the word KPI. If you want to compete in the global market as a leader, you must have to maintain your KPI, key performance indicators. If, you're, if your team cannot pro produce result, you cannot survive in the competition. See, let me give you an example. All of you are studying at our Kingston International College, Singapore, right? Some of you are doing postgraduate. Some of you are doing diploma in hospitality and tourism. Some of you are doing diploma in business management, right? Singapore got so many colleges, not so many, but more colleges, I would say like, we, we also have competitors, right? So why you are here? under the umbrella of Kingston International College because you realized that you are really, really getting the right skills, right knowledge, right information from the programs, from the course that you are doing. See, so directly or indirectly, you guys are here because of the result because of the outcome, because of the quality, because of the value, because of the outcome that you feel it is important for you. Understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So remember this one. So in order to make your team like outcome-oriented team or result-oriented team, you have to follow the strategy leadership strategy, meaning to say method that you need to implement, technique or tactic that you need to implement for your team so that you can make your team more and more productive at the first place. Okay, now no problem. It's okay. Now let's go for the next one. Before I go, let's, let's talk about the last paragraph. Good leaders have the ability to create 
right environment for their team members to achieve organizational goals. Now, I have a question for all of you. What do you understand? What is your thought or insight? What is right environment at the workplace? Let me stop sharing my screen and let this question put in the class. Who can tell me what do you mean by right environment at the workplace? Anyone would like to share anything? What is right environment? I would like to encourage the new participant. I don't want to talk only with Mr. Sharma all the way. I would like to encourage the new face from the crowd. I can see 184 of you are here. Okay, excellent. Thomas, you need to switch on your camera so that I can uh, unmute your microphone. Mr. Thomas, you there? Switch on your camera. Okay, good. Excellent. Yes, Mr. Thomas, what do you mean by right environment at the workplace. You need to give two or three examples for the class. Okay, I think he got internet connection problem. I'll go to Castro. Castro, hello Castro, can you hear me? Hi sir, hi Mr. Professor. Um, okay. For me, me is uh, it's like uh, you have the positive work environment, like to be social. Being social to other mate mm -hmm. and really good to communicate to other and understanding and uh hundred percent or ninety percent to take uh, responsibility as uh, as a worker mm -hmm. and you need to uh, you need to accept what is your position. You, you are very nice workplace. person, Castro. You know you are very nice person. You are following democratic leadership leadership for your organization right Excellent. yes uh, so, yes because uh as a as a worker you need to follow the rules and regulations of the workplace where you are working and like you should uh you should respect what you are well, what is your work there excellent very good so right environment from if i make the summary from castro right environment at the workplace meaning to say supportive environment from the management side, right? Okay, Mr. Daniel, you will be the last speaker, I mean the last participant for this question. Can you please tell me more about what do you mean by right environment at the workplace that leader can create? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, in the context uh, uh, that is being discussed now, Mm -hmm. uh, a leader is supposed to create an environment where everyone under his leadership or her leadership feels valued. And uh, when they feel valued, they will be able to make a contribution 100%. And that yes. will benefit the organization. My question Thank is you, how, how you can make your people feel value what are the things you you will be doing in order to let them feel value in your organization uh, for you to make them uh, feel valued you need to be open to their contribution yeah May, you need to be to create a, a team uh, whereby everyone feels is a is a team player Excellent. Thank you so much. I got my point. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Jacob, I'll talk with you when there will be a new question or new discussion topic. Yes, uh, those you have, uh, those you shared your opinion absolutely right. But let me add, what is the meaning of right environment? Right environment meaning to say supportive environment. Right environment at the workplace meaning to say we must have to... Uh, create a platform for our team members to learn and to grow. I'm repeating my statement. We have to create a platform for our teammates to learn and grow. Number three, we always need to listen, not to avoid, not to overlook their opinions. Because 
as a leader, I only can think from my point of view. And under my leadership, if I have 500 staff, and when I listen to them, I can get 500 different new thinking, new thoughts, and new behaviors, right? So that is called the right environment that we can create from our leadership strategy. And it is that is why it is important. Uh, Alisa, please don't try to draw anything on screen. Please stop doing this one. You are disturbing 184 of your friends. So please don't do that. Now, the, the last topic that we have under importance of having a leadership strategy, it's all about we can facilitate changes in business strategy. Today, remember, one of our important topics is change management, right? That I'll be explaining more uh, a bit later. Now, see, if you want to change anything, if you want to change anything or if you want to implement something new it's challenging it's really really challenging so without implementing the right strategy right culture you cannot change any action or any any you know plan for your organization let me give you an example remember during the COVID-19 pandemic, many, many business closed down in all over the world. Think about it. In your country, many companies, especially the medium-sized company, closed down. And still, some of them struggling to get back their market again, right? But some companies, they could survive even during the pandemic time. Why? Because of money? No, not because of money, not because of capital, not because of technology, because of the right change management for an organization. See, many companies, they implemented a new strategy that is called WFH, working from home, right? I think some of you got this experience during the pandemic time. Maybe you were working from your home. So it was not that easy for the leader of the organization to implement this culture working from home, right? Because people at home, they don't want to work. They, maybe they will feel lazy. They will spend their time with their friend. I mean, family members inside of the house, right? It could happen. But when you develop a strategy and you make sure all the people are following your strategy for the betterment of your organization without making any noise, without making any problem, your followers will follow your strategy. Understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So it comes from you as a leader, how you develop the strategy, right? Still, in our organization, we are, some of us, we are working from home. But we have a strategy that we need to follow from our leader, Mr. Benson Ma. So when we are working from home, what we need to do, Always we need to, let me give you an example. Always we need to stay in a Zoom meeting from our phone or computer. Understand? So when we are working from home, we need to stand. Yeah, please wait. Okay, excellent. So we need to sit in front of the Zoom meeting and our camera must be on so that top management can see what we are doing for our daily task. See? So if there, if there is no strategy, we, maybe we, we cannot continue our job in our organization, right? So that's the, that's the 
important part. These are the importance of having leadership leadership strategy for each and every organization. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk ab about the impact of an effective leadership strategy. What, what are the impact? Why we, we as leader, we need to think about strategy. Number one, when we follow strategy, we can create more opportunities. We can create more opportunities, right? As a leader, you can, you can develop your product, you can develop your services, you can develop your market, you can develop your customer base accordingly. All of you clear, guys? Let me give you an example. I believe all of you know uh, Unilever product. All of you know Unilever. I think Unilever in your country also got Unilever product, right? So how an American brand, they develop their product and services in your country. Think about Toyota, Toyota car. It's a Japanese brand. How come you from the Philippines, you can buy a Toyota car? Because the leaders from all those companies, they are using strategic leadership or leadership skills and tactic in order to create more and more opportunities in all over the world. So how it can be done? Look at the first paragraph. It's all about, as a leader, we need to think in a bigger picture. We have to look ahead. We cannot look back. See, and we got to, we cannot only focus on daily operation. We have to think about our future, what we are going to do in our organization. We cannot forget the mission and the vision of our organization. I'm talking about visionary leadership. So when you are, when you follow strategy, statistics in order to in order to operate or in order to move forward in your organization, you can create more and more opportunities in your business or with your product or with your services. Number two, impact of an effective leadership strategy. What you can do, you can train other leaders. You know, it's very, it's very, you know, I can put it like this way. We have to be a bigger person. A leader always will be a bigger person. When you have the skills, when you have the knowledge, when you know how it can be done, what you need to do, you need to provide or you need to pass your skills for the next generation in your organization. Who can lead your organization after 10 years, after five years, after 15 years, after 20 years? So it means that as a leader, what we need to implement, we need to implement a mindset like be the bigger person. Always share your skills, your knowledge to the others who are working in your organization so that you also can make them skillful with a lot of abilities and a lot of skills and knowledge. Remember, good leader understand the business landscape and experience joy in watching their colleagues grow and succeed. Remember, you cannot feel like I'm not going to teach how I can improve myself in my organization. I'll keep it secret. It's not the right mindset. It's not right strategic leadership. Understand, guys? You follow? So it's all about sharing and train other leaders to understand and to be better and to be skillful at the first place. 
you need not to be worried. You, if you feel like, let me stop sharing my screen. Some of you may think, uh, if I if I share the skills to my senior manager, maybe my senior manager will resign next month, and he will be using this skill for my major competitor in the market. You need not to be worried like that. When you are following the strategic leadership at the right place, they will not resign. They will follow your leadership for a long time. Understand, Marisa, and all of you, uh, you need not to be uh, implement your narrow-minded thinking when you are working as a leader, when your position is as a leader. Okay? See? Fine. Now let's proceed and let's talk ab about the next that we have. Another impact of an effective leadership. We can build a stronger organizational culture. Remember, you cannot change your stuff. You cannot change the attitude. I mean, you cannot change the mindset of your teammates. No matter how strong you are as a leader, you cannot change people's personalities. It's quite difficult. But what you can do, you can create a culture and you can let them follow the culture that you have created in your organization for your followers. All of you clear, guys, what I'm trying to mean? Because your followers, your teammates will come from different background with different mindset, with different attitude. And it's quite difficult for a leader to change all those different, different thinking, different, different mindset. But what you can do, you can create a strong organizational culture. Number one, what kind of culture? I'm talking about positive culture. Sometimes you will face difficulties to maintain, to maintain, you know, 100% um, present of your staff at the workplace, right? Sometimes you might face difficulties to practice punctuality among your teammates. So how you can solve that kind of problem at your organization? Remember, some of your staff, if they got late to come and clock in, you got to be very firm. You got to be very sincere. See, for this one, you have to lead from the front. You cannot be late. If you got late to come for work, your followers will never take you, never follow your instructions or your instruction at the first place. Understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So uh, if I'm working under your leadership and I have come to know you are very punctual and you are very strict about punctuality and discipline, I will follow. I will make myself follow this culture. I'll, I'll not be late. I'll never be uh, late at my work. I always be on time. But if I notice my leader is always getting late, is not firm or she is not sincere, then there is no culture, there is no system, there is no particular rules and regulation that I need to follow. Now you understand, guys, what is the meaning of build a stronger organizational culture? Remember, people don't want to follow the rules. If you develop 1,000 rules for your staff to follow, they will not follow until you make it as culture. You make it as habit of your stuff. See, that's how you can create a strong organizational culture. So it's not about developing the rules. It's all about create the culture. You lead from the front. You make them realize that why 
we are following these kind of rules for our organization. Now, another important new topic for today, we will be talking about leadership strategies to improve team performance. So if you have 100 team members in your team and you are leading this team, you might, you might face difficulties to make 100 of them to be equally productive. Danilo, am I right? Jennifer, am I right to say? Alice, if you have 100 staff, it would be difficult for you to make 100 of them same productive. But if you follow some strategies, at least you can make 90% of your staff more and more productive at the workplace. So how it can be done? Look at the first one. You can define and articulate your vision. As a leader, you have to stand in front of your teammates and you need to share what is your vision, what is your aim, what is your planning, future planning, long-term planning about your team, about your department. So I think one statement from an American author, John Quincy Adams, will help you to learn the importance of sharing the vision. Look at this one. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a true leader. Try to understand this powerful statement, ladies and gentlemen. So as a leader, what you need to do at the first place, inspire. Not inspire, it's not just mental inspiration. You have to make sure you inspire your team, your crowd mentally so that they can act physically to do the things accordingly. All of you clear, guys, what I'm trying to be? Let me give you an example how as a leader you can uh, you can do this one, how you can inspire other people to dream more. Now, all of you, can you please wave your hand? I, I, I can see some of you are writing a lot of notes. Okay, writing, it's okay. Beside, you have to understand what I'm talking about. So how you can inspire your people, your teammates to do more. Do you think so, money? Yes, money is one of the factors. Jennifer, money is one of the factors. You have to provide two kinds of benefit, financial benefit and also non-financial benefit in order to inspire your teammates. What is the meaning of non-financial benefits? To inspire, yes, Vanessa already informed in the chat box. We got to appreciate our teammates. Yes, this is another way. Now, let me, let me tell you how you can inspire your people. Number one, as a leader, always you need to appreciate when your team members are working very, very hard. Number two, when you notice that your teammates, some of them are doing a remarkable things, very, very, you know, outstanding performance, you can, you, you, you have to appreciate, you know, what you can do. You can provide some gift, you know, price. I cannot say gift, it would be the price. And you call a meeting and during the meeting time, you share you tell your teammates, today we are here in order to appreciate one of our colleagues' dedication, one of our colleagues' hardworking mindset, one of our colleagues' positive attitude, one of our colleagues' dedication about our team. Then, 
as a leader, you show, you tell, and you represent the contribution of that particular staff in front of all the stuff that you have. I mean, in front of your team members. See, it will help all of them to inspire. And you tell them, hey guys, listen, I'm your leader. My door is always open for you. Any problem, any difficulties, just come to me. Anything, feel free to ask me. It's my job to help you, to guide you. Do you understand what I'm trying to mean? You have to destroy the gap between you and your followers in order to communicate effectively. Let me give you an example. Uh, I Today we have one of my colleagues, Mr. Gobin, whose name is HTT Host 10. Mr. Gobin, can you please wave your hand? Mr. Gobin, for example, Mr. Gobin is my manager. And I'm not, I'm not very comfortable to talk with my manager. And even if I face any difficulties, I'll not, Mr. Gobin. Why? Because I feel afraid that my manager will you know, scold me. My manager will be angry with my action. On the other hand, if our if my colleague, Mr. Gobin, is very supportive leader and he told me anything, feel free to ask me. So when I face any difficulties, I'll definitely ask for advice. You, you see, I'll definitely send message to Mr. Gobin for next, what is next what I can do. That's the way, as a leader, you can inspire your crowd, your teammates. You follow? Remember, some of your team members can ask you a very, very stupid question. It's okay. Do not be angry with them. Understand? Do not be upset. Do not insult them. Even let them ask, a very stupid question. Then you educate them what would be the right way to do the things at the first place. All of you clear, guys? That's way how you can inspire. Okay, one, one, one um, common examples. Remember, during your secondary school time, some of you did some of you did not like to ask question to some of your teachers. Remember those school days? You always became afraid. Why? Because if you ask, maybe you will feel that your teacher became very angry. Hey, why you did not understand this small topic? Are you stupid or what? I got this experience. Sometimes I really did not ask some question to some of my teachers. But when I notice one of my teachers are very inspiring and I, I asked him whatever the question, even during the class time, because I know this teacher will help me a lot until I make myself clear about my topic. See, so you can, you can remember your school days experience, how people think about inspiring people and non or not inspiring people so what do you want obviously you want to be an inspire inspiring leader right so be open create a platform from higher they can ask and they can learn more and they feel that we need to be more and more productive that should be the right way how you can improve the team performance at your workplace. All of you clear? Vanessa, Alice, that I can see all of you are here. Jocelyn, Iimon, e. Cherry, Razi, Mr. Dorji from Bhutan, Honey, Lara, okay, Maritis. Oh, Maritis got expensive glasses. Hello, Maritis. Wow. Yeah, okay, good. Now, and also I can see Manika, so far clear? Okay, now let's talk about the next tactic that you can follow for improving team performance. As a leader, 
don't try to take credit away from your teammates. Don't do that. We, we have to have this mindset to give the credit to the right person. So it reminds me a signature, signature statement from Del Carnegie, an American author and philosopher. Look at this one. People work for money, it's true, but go the extra mile for recognition and the rewards. It's true. It's true, my friends. It's, it's you know, human by born mindset. Actually, we really want to want to be recognized by the people in our society. Am I right? That's our mindset. We want that people from our society will respect. We want that people will understand how important we are or I am in my position. Let me give you an, a funny example. I have a baby boy. He's only one year, six month old. You know, only one year, six month old, he started to speak, to call father, mother, and also the small, small words. You know, and I noticed that nowadays, let me stop sharing my screen. Nowadays, when our relatives come to our house, you know, he will bring his toy bags. You know, he, he got a toy box. He got some cars, you know, some plane. He always bring this box in front of the relatives who comes to visit our house, you know? And he will show, see my car, my plane. Then I started to feel, why you need to show all those things to our relatives? And when, when the relatives say, wow, nice car, he started to jump, you know? He that is called by human by born capacity to be recognized in the society. Do you understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So in order to bring your team members to be most outstanding team in your organization, money is only one of the factors. Number two, give them the credit. Don't, don't don't feel hesitate to put your hands together when you notice that someone in your team is really doing a great job. Understand? Do not be hesitant to stand up and put your hands ahead and say, it. thank you, Jacob, good job. Understand? The small, small appreciation, always they will remember from their heart to go an extra mile for your organization. Remember, remember the three key principles that we are using in our organization, lead, discipline, and bonding. Always remember, if you want to be a strategic leader, strong leader, productive leader, supportive leader, strong leader, autocratic leader, democratic leader, follow these three principles. You can lead them. You can make them more and more productive in your team. All of you know lead discipline. Number three is bonding, right? Bonding. That is called bonding. Do not, do not be arrogant to sh shake hand with your teammates. You see? Stand up and say, uh, Danilo, good job, Danilo. I really appreciate him. He will remember this small appreciation for a long time for your team. Now you understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So that, that is another tactic that all the smart leaders from all over the world, they are following this one accordingly. Okay, uh, I think uh, we need a break for five minutes, right? Some of you need to go for washroom. Yeah, 
let's go for a five minutes break on very very short break in between so let's get started with the slide that we have now now you understand right uh, the strategies that we can implement in order to improve our team performance at the workplace right so see uh, some leaders yeah it's it's very sad but true that some leader often overlook the simple principle of what gets rewarded gets repeated yeah see sometimes sometimes some leader always overlook this one they feel like you know if if they got rewarded maybe later on they will not do their job properly but it's not the philosophy is not the right at the first place so what we need to do we have to feel free to acknowledge and uh, appreciate the achievement of our teammates at the first place now let's talk at talk at, about the next tactic or next strategy that we have all of you yeah switch on your camera so that i can understand you already here so another important important strategy that we can follow it's all about communicate effectively communication is the key you know communication is the key if you can communicate effectively and smartly you can manage a team with a lot of outcome mr sharma am i right communication is the key but the problem is uh sometimes we always misunderstand the concept of effective communication it's not for example today i'm your speaker right if I keep speaking, keep speaking without checking that all of you understand what I'm talking about or not. If I never, if I never give an option to ask me if you do not understand any topic, feel free to ask, then it will it will not consider as communication. Maricel, you see, so communication, it's all about two parties involved speaker and the listeners but another set but it's the reality nowadays we never listen to the speaker to understand we listen to answer you know sometimes we listen to our uh, boss we listen to our supervisor we listen to our teacher in order to answer not to understand what was being said so we got to come we, we got to come out from this mental state we got to enhance communicate communication effectively look at the uh, statement from simon sinek great leaders communicate and great communicators lead from an American writer, American author, American philosopher, Simon Sinek. See? So to be a strategic leader, what we need to do, we need to have great communication skills. Only the great communicator can lead. Do you know the reason why? Because leading a team, it's all about make sure information is correctly convey to each and every team members. If I cannot convey the instruction, if I cannot pass the instruction to the entire team members, what will be happening? Always there will be misunderstanding, miscommunication. So what we need to do? We need to make sure when we communicate, we speak clear, we speak slow, we make it concise, and we need to check that our followers, they really understand what we are talking about, what are the instructions we are giving to our team members. All of you clear? Communication, huh? So find out the way how you can adjust your communication skill. 
in order to lead a team as a strategic leader. Okay, fine. Next one. We got to anticipate what could happen. Team performance, again, huh? you will be handling different people from different culture with different mindset. So what we need to do for optimal team performance, we need to anticipate, we need to feel, we need to understand what will be the next for our team. If, if we cannot anticipate, if we cannot imagine, or if you have no idea, no clue what will be happening, then I cannot be a strategic leader. You cannot be a strategic leader. So let's talk, talk about a uh, you know, signature statement from John Maxwell, another American author. You know, the pessimist companies about the win. The optimist, they always will welcome the change. And the leader always will adjust the cells. Cell, I'm talking about the sheep of the cell. Understand all of you guys, this powerful statement? See? So, as a leader, when you feel like that something is happening that is totally out of your control or something is going to happen that would be a difficult situation in your team or in your organization. What you need to do, what we need to do as leader, we need to adjust. We need to find out the root cause. We need to give the solution in order to find out the cause and in order to give the solution, we cannot use our emotion. We got to use data. We got to use information. We got to use statistics. Only then we can anticipate and we can adjust the things that we need to implement in our team. Let me give you an example. For example, out of sudden you, you realize in your organization, you know, the number of the number of, I could say, MC. MC means, you know, your, your staff easily got sick and apply for MC. They have the right, your team members have the right to apply for MC. But if you notice that the, the number of MC, it's increased by 15%, 20%, then you have to anticipate somewhere something wrong maybe lack of motivation maybe lack of you know staff satisfaction maybe the team your team members they feel stress they feel anxiety they feel no motivation to come for work understand guys what i'm trying to mean or maybe when you collect data you can find out that your team got overwhelmed they have so many things to do every single day and they have no rest they have no mental rest they have no physical rest that's why they are becoming sick in your team so what do you need to do you need to adjust you cannot be angry you cannot be uh, emotional about the approach of your teammates all of you clear understand yeah, that's the way how you really can do something and you can anticipate what could happen in your team at the first place. All of you clear? Okay, good. So later on, when our, uh, our host will send you the link of this PDF, please don't forget to read all the explanation that I have added. I don't want to read. You guys can read at your home so i don't want to waste my time i'll give you some examples and explanation so that you can understand the case understand the scenario accordingly now leadership strategies to improve the team performance it is a very common statement being used in all over the world which is lead by examples 
complete by examples. Remember, especially the young generation, they don't like to have ordered. You know, they don't like that. Uh, for example, uh, for example, Mr. Roland, Roland, I remember your name. I remember your face from my last few classes. So Roland, Roland, hello, Mr. Roland, can you hear me? Wave your hand. For example, you are my leader. You are my manager. You are my supervisor. And every day, you ask me, Faisal, you have to do it by 2 p.m. And you have to send to me by 2 p.m. Faisal, you have to complete this project by 5 p.m. And you have to send it by 5 p.m. So what I will feel? I will feel very, very lonely. I will feel no support from my leader. I will feel that it is stressful. I feel that it is difficult. I will, I will find that it is challenging for me. Why? Because my manager is not leading by setting examples. My leader is leading by asking me to do. Understand, guys, the difference? So then I might end up with demotivation, poor performance, you know, or maybe I'll have mental health problem. But when my leader, Mr. Roland, Roland is leading by setting example. Faisal, come. Today, I'll train you how you can prepare the monthly sales report. It's very easy. Come, on, I'll train you. See, I used to prepare all the sales report for last five years. And you can see the summary. You can see the step. I'll send you two examples. When you are free, have a look. And follow and follow the chronological order, you follow the flow, I believe you can complete this project, this paper by 5 p.m. If you do not understand anything, always ask me. Come to my office. I'm here to help you. That is called lead by examples. So when I, when I notice that my manager, my leader, he knows how to do this, and he taught me how I can do this, I'll do it. I'll feel positive in order to complete this task accordingly. All of you clear? Look at what has been said by an army, Chinese army general, Sun Sun. A leader leads by example, not by force. If you force your teammates Yes, some of them will absorb, but most of them will give up. Mary Gracie, understand? If I keep forcing you every day, one day is okay. Two days is okay. From the day three, you will, you will just give up. You will feel that ah, I need to find out another way or another job for me. So do remember, when you are leading a team, lead by examples, not by force. Nowadays, forcing really, really not working in, you know, corporate industry, in corporate level. Understand all of you guys what I'm trying to mean about this one? See, a leader said, uh, um, yes, acceptable or not within the organization. And no rules or policies are more potent than this. What does it mean to be a better leader? Be aware of how impactful your behavior is. And behave, behave how you want others to. So when you behave like leading from the front by setting examples, yes, you can make your team to be more and more productive at the first place. Okay, now look at the next tactic that you can follow in order to improve your team performance. 
build a cohesive team. What does it mean? Let, let's talk, talk about a signature statement from Goethe, from a German philosopher, a great person attracts great people and knows how to hold them together. I'm repeating my statement. I'm repeating my statement, you know, in order to make your team performance more and more remarkable, what you need, Miss Jennifer, you need some great people in your team, right? Great people, not only just professional people, but also the people with full of people skills, right? Who knows very well how to respect each other, how to communicate with top management, middle management, and lower management. It comes from the great people, great people mindset. So also, if you want to hold, if you want to keep the great people in your organization, what do you need to do? You have to be a great leader. You have to be a strong leader. You have to be very open-minded, supportive-minded leader that can help you to create a productive team in your organization. Remember, you are, uh, you, got to, you got to believe this one as a team leader. I am as you are. Let me type this statement in the chat box. I am, uh, well, I can't type, please wait, as you are. Can all of you find what I have written in the chat box? I am as you are. What does it mean? In your team, your team members are very important as you are important in your professional life. So be good, be good at keeping the good people or developing your people skills for your team in your organization. Also, a leader must know how you can work with conflict, how you can minimize the conflict, how you can survive with your team and team members when something is happening challenging in the team environment, right? And also, you as a leader, you always will be very, very open in order to find out the strength and weaknesses of your teammates and help them to overcome their weaknesses and be stronger for your team. Clear? Look at the next, the last paragraph. You know, a cohesive team works together, a dedicated team, a motivated team always will work together. And the rule of leadership is to facilitate building this team. So when we inject discipline for our teammates in order to think like team always will come at the first place, not personal interest, not personal choice. I'm talking about the team spirit. So it comes from a strong leader in order to build a strong, productive, and motivate team for an organization. Another important strategy that we can follow for team performance, look at this one from Steve Jobs. Innovation always will differentiate between leader and a follower. What I'm trying to mean, this part, as a strong leader always will be creative in his journey. Creative what? Creative new product, creative new services, creative new strategy, create new market, create new product, create new services for the organization. Emily, understand all of you guys? Understand this part? So from Steve Jobs' point of view, in order to build a team with full of product, I mean full of outcome, we have to be creative. We have to create. How we can create something new? 
we have to gather more knowledge, more skills about our industry. See, when we have more knowledge, more skills about our industry, we can create the new product, new services, new components for our organization. So do remember this important part, all of you. Now let's move on to the next one. I always, I always believe that we there are three professions that we have. Those professional people always need to learn. Number one, doctor. Number two, lawyers. And number three, leader. Try to understand this one. So, why? Because every day, Doctors, they have, they are come. I mean, they have come to know that new disease, right? New medicine. They need to study. They need to understand in order to provide smart and right treatment for the patient. Lawyers, you know, the law is changing every single day in all over the world, right? Crime is changing. The ways of committing crime also changing. That's why lawyers also need to learn about the new law, about the new rules. Same, when you will be a leader in a business or in an organization, continuously you need to learn the things for the betterment of your organizational life or organizational approach. Let me let me find, let me tell you uh, another American businessman, John F. Kennedy, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. If you want to be a strong leader, every day you need to learn from your activities. It's not just, uh, it's not just, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, you have to go and do your second master's, triple master, PhD about business, or business management. We are talking about practical application, networking, professional development, and the, the knowledge, the skills that you need to know at the first place for your industry. So as a leader, when you know what is going on and you have a strong network, strong network with the same professional from all over the world, you can, you can really pick up the most important things, most important technique for your team to implement. So what we need to, what, what we need to implement here, we need to implement the, the policy, the technique, learning or learn from our mistakes. That's the key point. When you make a mistake, learn from it and move forward. That will help you to be a strong leader to manage a team from the front. Now, the last topic about the tactics for improving team performance, what we need to do, we need to empower you, influencing our teammates, our team members, how it can be done. I will ask this question to all of you. Let me finish from uh, from Jack, Mr. Jack Wells' statement, American businessman, it's all, it's about growing your people, not you, and grow from the reflected glory of your people. It's a very powerful statement. Let me copy this statement and paste in the chat box. And let me stop sharing my screen. And let me invite all of you to switch on your camera and can you please wave your hand? Let me check. All of you here? Uh, some of you are... Uh, okay, good. I can see all of you are here. Okay, excellent. Very good. Joy, Daniel, and all. Okay, excellent. Now, my question is, how you can empower your people? What is the meaning of empowering? Let me tell you first so that you can answer me in your own point of view. For example... I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer. 
So currently, uh, in our organization, we have few new trainers. So what we are doing? So we are providing training for the new trainers to improve their teaching and training skills so that they can do their job properly. Even today, some of our new trainers are here in my, in my class today. Why? So that they can take away some tricks and technique that they can implement in their own class. So what is the meaning of empowering? So after observing my class, after taking some notes from my class, if the new teacher can do their job properly, that is called empowering. Now you understand, guys? So every time when you will be managing a team, what you need to do, you need to make sure that from your leadership, from your training, from your instruction, from your guideline, they make themselves ready to perform. Understand all of you guys? It's not let them memorize, let them perform, let them do, let them repeat, let them act. That is called empowering. You see? So how it can be done? Anyone would like to give some ideas, some thoughts, how you can uh, empower your teammates? Anyone would like to? I would like to invite, uh, yeah, I would like to see the digital hand. Can you please raise your digital hand so that you guys can speak? Okay, good. I want more hands. Okay, I got one female and I think uh, ladies first always, right? Uh, Kim, Miss Kim, I remember your name from my last beast talk. Yeah, tell me yes, how yes, you yes. can how how you can make sure that you are able to empowering your teammates. What you will be doing? Um, so about empowering teammates, I think it's about um, it's about delegate authority. Um, is providing the resources and support that they need. And um, especially encourage creativities and innovations because every organization needs creativity, creativities. And aside with that, need to set a because you already given them some uh, many support and resources. We also encourage them uh, to set a clear goals and expectations. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, yes. if they can manage and they reach the goals, then we will be rewarded for their achievements. And uh, along with that, we'll be setting examples for all the teammates and colleagues. And um, also, I think it's about um, providing opportunities and um, for the crew. And um, so I, I think it's about taking an example so we can make it clearly. Thank, thank um, you so much. Thank you. Nice. I, nice one. Nice one. Kim, anything, anything you want to add? Yeah, you can add one more option. How you can empower your team. Um, okay. Uh, uh, can I set an example? Yeah, yes. please. Um, please. Okay, so um, so I'm working in a marketing company, and I have a uh, a small group of teammates, and so um, to empower my team is about giving them the resources and support. It like um, you let them handle their own project and giving them like the information about the project, the budgets and the schedule, the designs and all the materials that they need. And also they have been setting a clear goals that you want this project to reach how many people and the KPIs for the project that they need to, to do with that budget. And also since uh, less than the same more that's project and uh, cost, um, the budget is one billion. Mm -hmm. So what was that rewarded? How many percent of the project, and uh, since um since they have completed many projects with successful KPI, and we are considering writing the evaluation um evaluations of the employees and recommendations for promotions and salary wow. raise, 
yeah and um, and besides because i'm giving too much uh, opportunities for the, the the teammates then other people then will get inspired and they will work harder to get to the positions that others yeah thank so you so I much wow wow yeah. excellent uh, we can put a big round of loss uh for uh, for Kim, wow, excellent! You know, uh, from the keen point, uh, I have, I have new. I mean, I have one thing in my mind. So when you as a leader, uh, you will trying to empower someone. Some of them, not all. Some of them will say, no. It's difficult. It's challenging. It's impossible. See. What, do you know the reason why? Because your team members, some of them, they will feel that changing, improving, developing is challenging. And that's why they will come out with a simple word, no. Understand? No matter how much support you will provide them, resource, provide them. They'll say, ma'am, sir, I think I need some time. I think I cannot make it for now. I think I'm not ready for the new project. That's the point where you need to empower them. You need to lead them. You need to educate them that no, you can make it. So here is the resource. Here is the authority. Here is your, you know, the things that you can implement in order to do so. I'll consider one more participant to talk about this one. Uh, Alicia, could you please unmute your microphone? Alisa, yes. How you can empower your teammates for optimal team outcome. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. speak to sure, sure. the client. Um, one of the ways I, I think and I, I can actually uh empower my team mm -hmm. because as a business owner and over the years who have been able to reach out to a lot of workers under me i believe empowerment is uh, empowerment your team is like your team carrying a reflection of who you are as a leader carrying a reflection of whom you are as a leader so what you know as a leader your team also must be able to know and actually execute it even when you are not on seat. So I believe that's what leadership is all about. So over the years, I, I think the the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mentor uh, aspect on how I empower my team is that I take my time to actually teach them what I know. I take my time to teach them what I know. I, I take my time to pour the knowledge on me into them so that they can actually carry out the task even when I'm on seat or when I'm not on seat. So the, the, the major strategy I use in empowering my team is okay. teaching Training. them what I know. Yes, training them with what I know. And Excellent. over the years, it has actually worked. Very good, very good. This is, this is the most challenge. I mean, this is the most uh, effective ways to empowering people, providing training, you know, hands-on training. So when you feel that, yes, I need, to let this group of people to be better as a trainer, I mean, as a leader, you have to arrange training for them. Only training. I'm, I'm not talking about so-called training. I'm talking about the practical, effective, intensive training for them to grow up. Excellent. Thank you so much for all of you, those who have um, participated the things accordingly. Now, organizational change. This is the last topic for today. Thank you. I, I, uh, I'm i sorry I could not speak to all of you, those who have raised your hand. Never mind. Maybe in future we will talk. So what is the meaning of organizational change? Remember, I change, you change, the world changes every single day. Even business is changing. Customer is changing. Customer behavior is changing. The product, the services, the ways of buying product, the ways of I mean, uh, buying services also changing. So when we put, when we think all the changes that we have, 
in our business life, in our organizational life, that is called organizational change. Remember, most change within organization, it will start from you, from me, from our leadership level and comes as a result of something that we are really, really want to achieve from our organization. So when we need the importance of change in our organization, who will change? Our customer? No. Our market? No. It has to be the leader. It has to be the leadership of that particular organization. Now, I always you know, like to give simple examples. Think about our school platform, our college platform. Before COVID-19, we only got offline training, offline class. After COVID-19, we got both offline and online. Understand, guys? So when our college opens offline and online both, they are got a lot of change. Am I right or wrong? We need to change a lot of things. We need to develop technology. We need to develop a platform. We need to find out. Uh, I mean, we need to develop a strong marketing department. We need to develop a consultant, a group of consultant, right? So any change, it needs proper planning from the leadership, from the leader's crew. Now, though I only have 15 to 20 minutes, so I'll make it simple for all of you to understand as a leader or as leadership, how the organization drive can change effectively. Number one, look at, look at the word that I put three times, communicate, communicate, and communicate. Before you change, before you implement any change in your organization, you need to communicate with your team members. All of you understand, guys? Three communication before you are planning to implement the change. Number two, you need to communicate while you are implementing the change in your business, in your organization. Number three, still you need to communicate even after implementing the change in your organization so that you can have complete picture what is happening in your organization, what is happening in your business. Example, you know, especially uh, post COVID-19 time, we, we can see the major implementation of e-commerce platform. Agree, guys? E-commerce platform. Now, every companies, every well-known companies, they have both brick and mortar outlet. Brick and mortar meaning to say physical outlet. And also, they have e-commerce platform. Customers can buy from their e-commerce platform. So before they implement all those changes, what they did, they communicate. They communicate, they communicate. All of you clear, guys? So pre-communication, during communication, post-communication, it will give you the clear picture about the change that you have implemented or you are planning to implement in your organization. In your organization. Then what you need to do? Change. I always believe, you know, change for the betterment. If I'm willing to change, I can be better. I'm talking about positive change, huh? I'm not talking about negative change. For example, I'm a non-smoker. I, I, I do not smoke cigarette. And if I change my habit, and if I started to smoke cigarette from tomorrow, I'm not talking about this change. I'm talking about positive change. So change for the betterment. So what we need to do, it is important that change is supported by the people 
all levels of the organization. Remember, you cannot depend only on the top management of your organization. You have to consider the middle management and also the front liners. You know the front liners? Actually, the people who will be doing the things that you are planning to change in your organization. Even though when you have the change, it will come naturally from the leadership, but people are much more likely to buy into a new initiative if others they work with are too. It means that so when you are implementing the change, not only for the top management betterment, but also for the entire organizational betterment or benefits for all, take note, all of your staff, all of your team members will appreciate the change that you are going to implement. All of you clear? Let me give you a small example before I move to the next slide. Think about the banking sector that we are in from all over the world. Now we are in digital banking sector, right? Uh, digital banking, all is computerized. But it was, not, it was not that easy for the leaders of banking sector of your country. Am I right? So in order to implement e-banking, they must need to make sure all the stuff, not only the junior stuff, not only the senior stuff, not only the new stuff, not only the old stuff. Everyone must have, must have computer skills. Do you understand what I'm trying to mean? If they got no computer skills, banking sector, it was totally impossible for them to convert like e-banking or digital banking. You understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? So before the leaders of the banking sector, they implement the change, they talk to each and every one. They make sure that the change is not only for the benefits of a group of people. It is for the benefits for each and every one who are involved in banking sectors. Now look at this one. As a leader, you have to anticipate the pitfalls, challenges, difficulties. What, what are the difficulties? What are the challenges you might face when you are going to change the things accordingly? Understand, guys? Change is not easy. Change always will need more, more works to do, more challenges to face, more difficulties to overcome. So what we need to do as a leader, we have to sit with our, you know, our teammates and we have to list down what are the pitfalls we can face during our change management. Why? You know, when you invite people for changing, they will take the easy one. Jocelyn, am I right? People always will take the easy one. What is the easy one? Narisha, the easy one is to simply say no. Right? No. I'm sorry. So find out before you are going to change challenges. If you want to change the working, working schedule, if you want to change the operation of sales department, the operation of marketing department, you find out what are the challenges. For example, now you are planning to implement not electronic media marketing, but the digital marketing. So what is the challenge? What is the negative aspects? Maybe not all of your team members, they know about digital marketing, right? So before you implement the change, what do you need to do? You need to provide them the training about digital marketing, right? Remember, change or changing someone 
changing a product, changing a service, changing operation, it will take a long term planning. You know, it is called sustainable development. You got to do a lot of research work. You got to collect data. You need to analyze data. Then you need to implement the change, not just from your own idea. Remember, as business leader, it's not what you think about your business. It's all about what market wants, what customer wants at the first place. So when you achieve something, don't forget to celebrate. Even the small, small achievement as a leader, you celebrate or you, in, I mean, you celebrate this event along with your team members. Let them know, let them have some fun because of this achievement. So when, when your team members will feel that as we already have achieved one part, or maybe only 1% or 2% of our change activities, they will move forward. They will feel it can be done. It can be achieved. It can be completed accordingly. All of you clear, guys? Understand? Okay, fine. Next one, be open to changing your change. Very powerful, huh? very powerful. Any new idea is just an idea until your idea is implemented in the real world. So what we need to do as leader, we should be flexible and willing to adjust as needed to drive the change. So if I, I'm, I'm, your, lead, I'm your leader and if I need to learn the new skills, I will learn at the first place before I ask you to learn. Mr. R. T. Mio, see, when I am flexible, when I am humble enough in order to learn the new skills, in order to change, yes, all of my team members, actually the entire organization, will change accordingly. Clear? Understand? So the last example that I would like to give about open to change, I would say the Microsoft. I believe all of you know this organization, right? Microsoft. We are using Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Windows. If you think about 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, that time, if you wanted to use Microsoft service like Microsoft Office, what you supposed to do, you must, you must need to buy their physical product. Am I right? Like the CD and the DVD of Microsoft Office, or Microsoft Windows, right? But in the year of 2024, you need not to go anywhere. What you can do, you can buy the Microsoft Office from Microsoft website, right? You can buy Microsoft Office, the serial key from their website. That is called change, you know? Previously, Microsoft used to focus on the physical product that we could buy from their authorized outlet. But what they did now, no need any physical outlet. Anyone from any countries of the world, they can buy Microsoft product from their house. That is called change. That is called change management. That is called implementation of change in an organization by a leader. All of you clear, guys? So I would like to end my discussion here about the topic that we had. Very interesting, I thought, I believe that leadership strategies for driving organizational change. So now our host, Mr. 
Gobi, could you please share the notes that we have used for today's discussion in the chat box? And all of you, please uh, download the PDF so that even after the discussion, you can keep it safe in your computer, in your smart device. And when you need, it, you can go through and you can remember what you need to do in order to implement strategic leadership and change for an organization. So if you have any question now, you can ask me in the chat box before we, uh, before I say have a great weekend. If you have any question, you can ask me. Now, do remember to be a leader, to uh, implement strong leadership, it's not that easy. Leader or leadership like an attentive student. Understand, guys, what I'm trying to mean? Serious learner who is willing to learn, who is willing to implement, who is willing to change, who is willing to help other people. Okay, so any question from anyone, you can ask me in the chat box. The chat box is open for all of you. If you have no question, you can leave one by one. But remember what we have discussed. If you learn, I mean, if you understand and if you are willing to implement, it can be done. Nothing is impossible. It will come from your mindset and from your willingness how you can implement the things accordingly. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend to all of you. I'll see you when I will have another opportunity to come and talk to you. Till then, all of you stay fine and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much.